It is now half past two. He said he'd be back by two. His coffee is here, his chair is here, and no David. We met at a dinner party. All the guys were army. Um, and I met him and I thought not immediately good things because he was wearing a cravat and I did actually think, oh what a plonker. But once he took the cravat off, <laughs> once I got past the clothing issue, um, uh, all was well. And I liked him from that night on. Our friends had a dinner party and they wanted me to come and they told us that they had the two most beautiful girls in Bedfordshire. So on the basis that both the two most beautiful girls in Bedfordshire would be there, I said yes. And for once, it was a simple case of they were right. The two most beautiful girls in Bedfordshire were there. So I asked one of them to marry me. Jura Cambridgeshire. It was Bedfordshire I was told about. But we met in Cambridgeshire. Stricken. Uh, yes, I was engaged before that and um, did actually go to that person after I'd met David uh, that, for that first time and said I think I've met the man that I'm going to marry. So then you broke off that engagement? It was broken off before, quite a long time before that. I had to tell other girlfriends on the same day that, um, that I found the right girl and so there was some fun quick phone calls to make sure nobody else was involved. So how many girlfriends did you have? Three. Serious ones? They thought I was serious. David. Well, you asked. First? Who proposed first? There was only one proposal. Um, and it was David. So we went to um, a meeting of uh, horses and hounds. Somebody leant down from their horse and said, I hear congratulations are in order. And David hadn't even asked me yet. So then, so I sort of ignored that. David took me off to Holcomb Beach in Norfolk, which is a huge, big, wide, empty beach. Uh, it could have been drizzling, but it was certainly very gray. And then, uh, so because that was November time, he uh, got down on one knee, and gave me a family ring, which is very beautiful. And he got a bottle of champagne out and two glasses all on the beach. And he had wet trousers because he'd got down on his knee in the water and it was cold. And so I'm, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't immediately what you would say romantic, that he, he stood up and it was all romantic. It was, get up off the floor, now you're wet and it's cold and I don't really want to stand here in the middle of the beach drinking champagne while you're standing there wet and... David does things differently. He doesn't really think things through, but I was incredibly happy to say yes and very lucky that he asked me in the first place. Ah, uh, we're old fashioned. I went off to Caroline's father, who was a very, very conservative, formal man. A wonderful, wonderful, sweet, kind man, but I knew I had to ask him before I asked Caroline. So I asked her father if I could ask her. He said, of course I could. And then I asked Caroline on the beach at Holcomb in Norfolk on a windy November day. And all I really remember is getting down on my knees and I was wearing Wellington boots. And um, I had a bottle of champagne in one pocket, some glasses and, uh, and a diamond ring. And as I got down and uh, got onto one knee, my boots filled up with seawater. <laughs> the weirdest thing would be uh, his exercising because he will go out on his bike for four hours he's supposed to be out for six gets a puncture comes home because he can't sort it out in the middle of the desert and then goes out again for another two hours who does that you come back after four hours and you think oh well i'm not going out again but yeah that i that's pretty weird but having said that now i've started running ultras i sort of maybe have same ish thing going on. 
If you can't beat them, join them. Can I tell you? So, no, I know what you're, I I know what you're thinking. Oh, there was gosh, a moment okay. a right. few nights ago where I thought she might be snoring. But I don't snore. But she doesn't snore. So I recorded her. We've decided it's called purring. She was purring in her sleep. She was definitely purring. I once got jealous when he was getting deeply into his triathlon and here in Dubai, especially he's out for hours um, and there are some quite attractive triathletes out here and he does chat to all of them and he's incredibly helpful and inspiring to both men and women and I think that I did have a little bit of an issue, not with any one in particular but um, him going cycling with, with people for long periods of time um, but it is what it is and uh, nothing's changed. Everything's still good. I think I would have done as a younger man, but now no, not at all. I just think she's fulfilling her purpose, what she's supposed to do. And I spent years with Caroline supporting me, and now I'm thinking that it's my turn to support her. No, there's no jealousy there. I'm just super, super proud of my wife. He says he's going to be back at 6.30 in the evening and doesn't come back until about 8. Uh, I said, Couldn't you call me? Couldn't you have messaged me? Could you not just say something to let me know that you're alive? Um, and I had supper waiting, supper's in the dog. And then contact. When he was out in um, uh, wherever he was, Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever he was, I had friends whose husbands called them, there was a general at the time, he called his wife every single day and I was lucky if I got a call once a week. There are things that might irritate me from time to time a little bit, probably spending money, but you know, even that isn't really irritating, it's just a fact of life. Well Caroline explains to me that it's all about flow and that means if you want to earn money you have to spend money. So as long as the money is flowing out, then it will flow in. I'm not sure quite about the, um, the, the logic behind this. Um, I do get marriage proposals on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and it, it's, it's very nice. I can't say that there's anything negative. Um, I don't respond to them because I don't generally respond to men because it just all gets, starts getting weird. If you just say hello back to somebody, you get this whole thing. Um, I don't mean to be rude or upset anybody, but if you look at my profile, probably my profile doesn't say I'm married, but um, it would be worth Googling to see if I'm married before you ask me to marry you. Amuses me mostly. And sometimes I have to say, hmm, I'd block that one. Because when you have, I don't know, 54,000 followers, the chances are that one or two are going to be a little bit alternative and sometimes inappropriate. But that's a fact of life. I always imagine that like a stadium full of people, there are going to be a couple of people there that don't have the same values and standards that I might have. Um, there is no such thing as if we were not together because well, I cannot imagine life without David. Um, uh, the, we say together, if you leave me, I'm going with you. That's, that's how it is. Oh, I'd be miserable. If I didn't have Caroline, life wouldn't be, wouldn't be anything like this. I would wander around with a Labrador and a dodgy sense of clothing. <laughs> I think because we've learned so much about each other after 28 years, um, it would take a lifetime for anyone else to learn that much about me and to understand when I need a hug, when I need space, um, 
when I spend too much in the shops and, <laughs> and then uh, I have what we call a hosepipe van, which means no spending. Uh, we just understand each other. What's not to love? Subscribe, like, comment. <laughs> I'm telling you now. <laughs> Subscribe, like, comment.